All right, we definitely know plenty of my viewers love Timu here, and it's been a little while. So today we're jumping back in with Timu's top five sold products so far of 2024. Now, jumping right in, I'm not exactly sure how accurate those numbers are. Timu is definitely known to hide negative reviews and all this other stuff. So there's a really good chance that I just did what they wanted me to do and I bought a bunch of products that they were trying to push. But according to their numbers, these are the top five sold products in Timu so far of 2024. So let's dig into it. Starting right up front. Now, we already did try one of these a while back and it wouldn't quite do what it was supposed to do. Now, when we tested this last one, it couldn't jumpstart a V8 or a V6. I did eventually get it to work on a 1.8 liter Volkswagen four cylinder, but that's the best I could do. Now, that doesn't mean it wasn't useful. That last one was crazy useful because my newer jump starter box will only work if it senses some amount of battery power. So if the battery is completely toast or completely dead, it wouldn't work at all. Keeping that little guy with me helped out a lot. It gave a 12 volt signal allowing a better jump starter to work. A lot of smart jumper boxes will not work unless they sense a little bit of power. We're gonna jump into this one. This one right here is called that Butour car jump starter kit. We'll make sure the prices are up here. You guys know how we do it. And hopefully this one's a little stronger than the last one. I got a couple dead batteries outside, so don't worry. We're gonna get out there and we're gonna check it out. So right here in the box, get yourself an owner's manual. She's pretty thick. We're not gonna look too far into that. Okay, this is interesting already. So this connector here, you have a two prong connector that slides into the jumper box. This is gonna allow you to connect in your clamps. Now, interesting thing, my newer jumper box has a very similar connection set. On the back here, it's got a couple of little, little tidbits of information telling you exactly what the lights that are on mean. And then inside, we also have a USB charging cable for the box. And it is, heck yeah, USB type C. Love to see that. All right, jumping right into the actual unit itself. I mean, it's got a decent look to it. Red, black, got an on button here. Shows your battery level here. So basically idea, oh, it's, it looks like the light just kind of comes right on already. So basic idea, looks like we're gonna unfold this. Take your prongs, match them up. One is circle, one is not. In you go. And then you have these lights here. You got this little light that beeps on the back. You're gonna get your function test here for what the lights mean. Now, aside from that, cool feature of these, they can always be used as a battery bank too. You'll notice you have USB-C that's gonna be in and then USB-A is usually out along with your flashlight and this nice rubber gasket we have covering the whole thing. So let's go ahead and check this thing out, see how well it works. Welcome to my junky Land Rover. <laughs> I bought this at an auction a while back and we're gonna use it for our tests today. Test number one. Sorry about all the traffic and noise, but this is what we got. We got ourselves a beep. Oh, gross. All right, so we are on a project vehicle number two. With the Land Rover, we had no luck. If you look closely, you will see why this is a project vehicle. This is actually my plow truck. All right, we have ourselves a green light. The last one we just got beeping, let's give it a shot. Would you look at that? Now, just as a quick show, I have disconnected the box. And if we go to start it, we got nothing but some light beeps. So that's a good show. This thing actually worked. Let's try it on one more vehicle. And on to project vehicle number three, the Buick Regal. As you can see, this beauty is looking fantastic. I'm not sure if it's working, let's give it a shot. This one, the battery is dead in the key fob, so we go ahead and stick this down here by the reader, and we appear to have nothing. Okay, after giving the front unit a reset, not quite enough. All right, coming up next, we have covered a lot of power banks on this channel. No doubt about that. If you guys haven't seen those videos yet, go check them out. A lot of fun, a lot of cool power banks for cheap. So next up, we have ourselves a power bank. The box looks a little destroyed here, but the bank itself doesn't appear to have any damage. USB type C cable here to a USB A, nice manual. That's about as small and as simple as it gets. Then we have the actual unit. 
Ooh okay, so looking at the bottom here, we have four USB Type A's, a Lightning, a micro USB, and a USB Type C. Now, in the past, I have kind of complained about them having micro USB on them, but people pointed out they still have a lot of micro USB things out there. And you know what? They're right. I still have a couple micro USB things around, so it is nice to have. All right, so if we hold the button here on the side, nothing happens. You double click, you get your lights on, double click to turn them off. One click shows a 64% right there on the screen. It goes away pretty quickly. All right, now in order to test this, we got a couple of ways, but one of the other top five items is actually a USB type C cable. This is gonna help us see the output of this thing. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So price of this guy right up here on the screen. At first glance, I will say this is a nice feeling cable. Looks like the brand is Tukey, T-O-O-C-K-I, not sure. Got a nice little cable wrap on it though, cable tie. It's long, probably about six feet long. Yeah, I mean, it does feel nice. Let's see if we can kind of get this on camera. It's got a really nice braided aesthetic to it. Check that out. All right, so the cool part about this cable is in the fact that it's just a USB type C. This is supposed to go up to 100 watts and it has a little display right here on the side that tells you the wattage it's outputting as it's putting it out. But just checking out the attention to detail on this, it's actually quite surprising. So let's take a look here. You have like aluminum edges here. And then on this end as well, along with a 6A, probably stands for a six amp marker, nice. So let's go ahead and test this thing out. We'll get it in right now. It's just showing one watt, three watt, six watts. <laughs> All right, six watts. So that shows that the power bank is now charging at seven watts. And it shows the power bank itself is also slow charging. So that's not very fast. We'll try a different port here real quick. Again, green charging on Android is slow charging. Seven watts. So over to my right here, I have a 100 watt fast charger. I'm pretty sure the 100 watts is only from the USB type C, but let's plug this in and see what we get. All right, we got that plugged in. It's kind of figuring its stuff out. Well, it looks like we're only getting 14 watts through the USB A port. See, that is a problem though, because I'm pretty sure that that thing only actually outputs higher wattage. Let's check something else. All right, as a final test, we're gonna test it with the Inui power bank. This thing is an absolute monster. This is actually the power bank I used on my trip to Vegas for CES and then Hawaii and it powered, powered everything. This thing, is, this thing is stellar. It's only at 9% left, but it looks like this cable isn't getting as much over 14 watts. So after double checking a few cables, looks like the highest I'm getting out of this is 14 watt. Now in general, when you're looking to run things up to 100 watts or six amps, you're gonna be using USB type C to C, not A to C. Still, pretty nice cable. I mean, you know, kind of gimmicky, but in the end, it does feel like a super nice cable. Pretty impressed. Normally the cables I get from, from Timu are kind of cheap. But on that note, let's double check and see if this power bank over here can do anything faster charging wise with a little bit different cable. All right, so huge down marks. After testing a few different cables, this USB type C doesn't actually charge out. So it seems like that's the way to charge this. So I'm gonna call a huge fail on this little guy here. Yeah, we're gonna vote no on this one. Regardless of the price, this thing's just, I would say this one's really not worth it. It says it's 40,000 milliamp hours. There's no way this thing's actually 40,000 milliamp hours. You know what, let's hop inside of it and take a look. And that's decided, I'm not getting into this thing while it's in one piece. Well, if you have a little more knowledge than me on stuff like this, here's the inside. Now, this is not what I expected. Most of these cheap battery banks use the ever popular 18650. This one is actually using one, two, three, four custom pack lithium ion batteries. Keep in mind, if you're taking stuff apart like this, be careful. Uh, once I got inside, I switched from the metal tool to the plastic tool and it did not fully survive. But I was just really curious. So you got a small board inside of there. You have your little, you got your little power read out here. There's not really a ton going on in there. I do see that the USB-C port is connected and soldered in right down in here, but again, so maybe the capacity on this is a little higher than I thought. It does have quite a bit of weight to it. 
I will hook it up to my USB reader and try to drain the power out of it overnight, see what I can get out of it. Either way, there's what the inside of one of these looks like. Here's just the plastic cover and the little screen. So up front though, it's got slow charging. It's not very fast. The USB type C port is power in only. I didn't think I'd actually seen one that did that. A lot of the other ones we checked out before said USB-C in only, but they also charge out of it. They seem to work just fine. So jumping into our next product here, one of the top selling products was a knife. Manufacturer Guangdong Jingchen Ji Investment Company. I don't know, knife. Got ourselves a kitchen knife though. Let's check it out. Hey, that looks cool. Look at that. It's a fake like laser etched Damascus, but that's actually a pretty decent looking knife. Not a ton of weight to it though. Feels a little cheap. Let's get a test it real quick and see how sharp it is. Also make sure you stick around to the end of the video. We'll make sure to put a capacity on this 40,000 milliamp hour battery at the end. All right, we're showing zero grams. It feels kind of sharp. It doesn't feel crazy sharp, but it feels, it feels kind of sharp. I mean, it's got a good look to it though. It's supposed to be like a Japanese type chef knife, six inch. All right. Whoa. Was that a fluke? Holy cow. This thing might be a lot sharper than I thought. Okay, we're gonna test that one more time because this is 125 grams. That did not, man, that doesn't feel that sharp. That's, that means it's sharper than a razor blade. Now, keep in mind, the sharpness of a knife from the factory doesn't determine the quality or the value of the knife, right? Basically, what you're paying for is the quality of the steel. This is a cheap knife. It doesn't feel like any kind of expensive steel. So in the end, even if it is sharp, this isn't something that's gonna hold its sharpness for a crazy long time. But I'm still impressed. Let's uh, start this again. Make sure we're at zero. Okay. Holy cow. <laughs> This might be one of the sharpest knives in my house right now, and that's and that's not saying a lot, but that's that's impressive. Needless to say, this thing should pass the paper test without issue. Oh, okay, all right, guys. This, this, okay. I mean, it feels nice. It's got a really nice handle. I mean, even, I mean, this thing is, this thing is like a razor blade coming out. Look at that. Okay, we're back. Technically, I lost some footage due to hitting the wrong button on the camera and recording in slow-mo. So we'll finish up our knife review with saying this thing is awesome. This thing is like a freaking razor blade. For under 10 bucks, go buy this thing right now. You gotta do it. Next up, before we hop into this last product, let's talk about the battery. So I came up with a plan. I could use this little guy right here to tell me exactly how many milliamp hours are in this bank by draining it out to something else. Problem is, this thing is powered by the unit that power is coming from. It doesn't have any built-in battery, no self-power. So if I did that and I missed it by a minute, all the testing would be gone. So, no idea. Well, I know the NEU power bank is 27,000 milliamp hours. It's extremely reliable. It's a well-known brand and it's quality, right? So I drained this thing to zero. Then I charged the team of power bank to 100%. Then I took this one, plugged it into this one until this guy reached zero. Once this one reached zero, I had, let's take a peek, 42%. So 42% of 27,000, we're looking at right around 12,000 milliamp hours. Not tiny, not horrible, but for the size, the weight, and the claim that it's 40,000 milliamp hours, and considering this thing's almost 50 bucks, I have seen this one right here, 100 watt, fast charging, 27,000 milliamp battery bank. I've seen this thing on sale for like 60 to $70. So this, this ain't it. It charges way too slow. The USB-C port is in only, which, why? It's all on the same board. It wouldn't be very complicated to make it both. It completely lies about its overall capacity. It's heavy, it's bulky, and it's an absolute no for me. You guys can let me know what you think down below, but I, I have a feeling you're gonna agree with me on this one. Setting those aside, full transparency. Like I said, lost a bunch of footage. I clicked the wrong button. I recorded in slow-mo with no audio. That went really well. So we're gonna unbox this again. First time for you guys, second time for me. So this, a $12 solar panel from Timu. This is also one of the top five most sold items so far of 2024. Like a lot of our previous solar panels, it is the older blue technology. You can kind of see the color in the hue there. 
On the back, very simple, you have a five volt DC inverter with two USB ports. Along with that, you also have two carabiner clips and two suction cups in case you wanna hook it to a window. Although with solar panels, vertical is not usually the way to go. You want about a 45 degree angle towards the sun for best power consumption. So let's get outside, let's plug it in, let's test a few things out and see how it goes. All right, let's get this angle correctly. All right, total watts, one. We are pulling one watt. All right, we are now charging the phone and it looks like we're ringing in about two watts. I'm trying to angle this a little bit better, but this solar panel is not quite doing it. The last one we had was close to five or six watts. And we can see that one is measuring one. I thought that was an error, so I hooked up this meter here. I'm trying to move. You can see right here, I'm trying to hold it at the right angle towards the sun. But yeah, it looks like this panel, even sitting flat here, it is maxing out at two watts. Let's go ahead and check the other connector. I'm using the blue one. All right, looks like on the other connector, we're only pulling in 1.5 watts. So she is charging, but man, she is not charging well. Okay, we tested a whole bunch of cables. We tried to charge a few things, didn't go well. Pretty disappointed that a panel twice the size of the last one caps out at two watts. Very disappointed. Um, I highly suggest you do not buy this. I tried multiple variations towards the sun. I tried multiple cables, as we can see. The only positive thing that came from testing this is I found out between using this and this that the wattage on this is actually pretty accurate. It was reading one to two watts maximum. I tried a couple of other known good cables as far as speed goes for charging or wattage capacity. And it was a huge letdown. So we aren't exactly looking too hot today on products I can recommend. So today's absolute highlights are going to be this knife. Again, I will put these links down below. I'm very sorry, but the Timu links tend to change a lot depending on how Timu lists their products. Usually sometimes the very day I put it up, products are discontinued, but this is gonna be down below. So if you're interested in this knife, it feels solid, it's crazy sharp. How long will it hold its sharpness? I don't know, but I'm going to be using this. Maybe I'll get an update video on some of the stuff I use here in a couple of months. And this, this is an absolute win. This started up a 1995 Ford F-150 with a 5.0 V8 that had eight to nine volts in the battery, and this thing fired it up like an absolute champ. It struggled and failed against another V8 that had a completely dead zero volt battery. It might even be a safety feature in here since it didn't recognize any voltage, it didn't output voltage, so it doesn't short out, cause fire, stuff like that. But this thing is great. This would be a great gift for family, friends, great emergency or backup just for yourself. So make sure to check this one out too. Also, the only sponsor of today's video is you guys for watching. So I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Timu did not sponsor this video in any way. Honestly, I do not want them as a sponsor anymore. It's more headache than it's worth. So if you appreciated the video, if you liked it, just give me a thumbs up and a like and subscribe if you want to see future content like this. So until then, go pick yourself up a backup battery bank and we'll see you on the next one.